Hello, everybody. On stage live with us right now are Washington State head coach Jake Dicker, standout safety Jaden Hicks, standout offensive lineman Maake Fafita, and former WSU star and Seattle Seahawks all-timer Robbie Tobeck. Yeah. We're going to have a wide-ranging conversation here. I'm going to start with Coach Dickard. Jake, you came into this job under unusual circumstances, and it's been paramount for you to build the culture. Talk about building the culture at Washington State. Well, I think any time you, know, you come into a situation, it's all about leadership. You know, and it's about setting a vision and a culture. And culture sometimes is one of the most overused words in football, but it's also the most important. Okay, we define culture as how we do things. Okay, so there's a standard to that. I'm not a big rule guy, right? So I want to set standards and I want to show these guys the right way to do it. And one thing we talk about is hunting the good, right? There's so many things that we need to improve on and do this as coaches. We forget about all the great things that our guys are doing. And that's not just an on the field thing. Okay, and we're two great representatives of our program and obviously a Cougar legend here in uh, Robbie. But at the end of the day, it's what you do on and off the field. And it's about being our best in everything we do on and off the field, period. So I think we show them the way. And I think these guys are the ultimate carriers of our culture, right? They embody what Washington State is. It's a blue collar. It's a chip on the shoulder. It's a hunger. It's a passion. It's a lot like all the people that are in this room. You know, and I think that's really special as I get a chance to visit with everybody. I think our football team embodies what Cougs are really meant to be, and that's what we've tried to establish here at Washington State. Jaden, we talked earlier today, and you and RJ and, and Maki were talking about the, the need to compete in everything you do and some of the things that are taking place within the program, whether it's playing cornhole or whatever, you guys compete all the time. Share that piece of the puzzle and how that helps build the winning culture. Yeah, I think it really bonded us together doing these activities, doing these uh, challenges. You know, we, we're having fun in the locker room. We're having fun doing these challenges. So we're all buying in, bonding together, creating this brotherhood, creating a better culture here. And uh, just everyone's buying in. So it's really good for this program. The one thing I'll say about that, we, we bought a ping pong table okay, and put it in the locker room. And you'd be surprised, A, how good these guys are. But B, when you put it down there, they see it as a ping pong table. I see it as a connection point, okay? And one thing you do through competing is you connect, okay? And that could be in Madden in the locker room, that could be in ping pong, it could be in cornhole, but you better believe it's on that field, right? And iron sharpens iron. What I loved about our group is we'd have a Saturday scrimmage and we'd have guys sitting in the locker room till 8 p.m hanging out, being with each other. That's the, that's the home, that's the heart of our program. And uh, it's just fun to see those guys really buy into it because at the end of the day, they're the ones that really got to adapt and they got to they gotta belong in there. And it's just something that's been so special. Ma, okay, we're gonna shift gears here for a moment. Yeah. You and I also talked earlier, you were the Swiss Army knife of the offensive line last year, playing two guard positions, tackle, and I think you can also play a little center if you're pressed into it. We have seen that this spring. Yeah. We have seen it. A man of many talents. So you, uh, you're not only a man of many talents, but you're also a man who's had a number of offensive coordinators in your time at Washington State. Talk about where this offense is heading and the transition to the air buckle offense. Oh, I like that. <laughs> All right. Um, I mean, for me, it's always been kind of the air, right, air raid uh, out here at uh, Washington State. But I think a key thing that we always talk about with uh, our new offense is being consistent and make sure all the pieces of the puzzle fit together. You know, it's not just the offensive line. It's also the receivers, the running back, the quarterback, everyone. As soon as all of our jobs connect and um, we hit all those points, we're going to be a very strong offense, and I'm really excited for that. There's two people down there that will tell you the offense starts up front. Oh, and yeah. there's a physicality, there's a toughness, there's an aggressiveness to all that. And Make embodies that, I I'm telling you. And he's found his home at guard, and I can't wait to see him moving some people here in the fall now. Thank you. I love it. Speaking of great offensive linemen, Robbie, you are literally one of the greatest offensive linemen in Cougar history. Probably the greatest center outside of Mel Hine. Two Super Bowls, a Pro Bowl, and you took Washington State, helped take Washington State to its first bowl game in a number of years back in 1992. What were the, give me some of the highlights of, of your time at Washington State and why it's made you a lifelong Cougar. 
Well, I mean, r really, the one highlight is beating the hell out of the Huskies in in, in the snowball uh, my on, senior year. So go. let's that's right. Let's uh, you right. know, every every video you see is uh, you know you get a clip of that that game you know and, and so so that you know that was a highlight. But you know, coach talking about the locker room earlier and and, and the, the you know the ping pong table and guys hanging out and stuff like that. And I think that's one of the key things. I, I've never been on a good team. I've been on you know the Carver Bowl team nine and three, finished number seven in the nation my senior year at Washington State. Um, I played in two Super Bowls. I played on some good football teams, and I played on some bad football teams. So I I, I know the difference. And the locker room is the difference. You know, if you got a, if you got a group of guys that love each other, want to play for each other, want to play for their coach, uh, you can win some football games, and you and, and you can overcome a lot uh, a lot of obstacles and a lot of things just because you're a group that cares about each other. And, and I think that's one of the important things. And so when I look back at my time uh, at Washington State University, I think about that locker room. I think about my buddies. I think about. Uh, you know, uh, you, you know, us pushing each other in the weight room. I think about a guy like Josh Dunning. This is a great story. First time I ever did 405 in the weight room. We worked out together all the time. I finally got 405. Well, Josh is one of the strongest dudes ever to play in the program. He says, well, let me see how many times stronger I am than you. Gets down and does it 10 times. So so I think about Humble those. Experience. Well, yeah, Humble I, you experience. talk about competition. That, that, right. that, that hurt me there. But, uh, but uh, it's those kinds of relationships. Uh, that that are the, uh, honestly what, what I believe is the difference between winning and losing. Rob, this is the perfect transition to my next topic. Building chemistry obviously is key to success. With NIL and the transfer portal, that becomes more of a challenge because people maybe aren't here for four or five years at a time anymore. You're one of the co-founders of the Cougar Collective, which is trying to get Washington State in the game from an NIL perspective. Talk about the challenges and opportunities there. Well, you know, the, the, uh, the challenges are, 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 are many, but I think we have a formula for success. You know, obviously, when it comes to the Cougar Collective, uh, uh, we're, we're doing NIL deals for, for these guys and for other guys. And, and what that stands for is name, image, and likeness. And it's something that was brought to us uh, by the Supreme Court of the United States of America in a nine to nothing vote. So those nine justice, justices voted in unison uh, to, to allow a, a college athlete or any athlete, high school athlete even, to make money off of their name, image, and likeness for what they've accomplished on the field, similar to uh, an actor or a singer or whatever it might be. Um, and so now at Washington State University, we, this, is, this is part of life of college athletics now. Um, what we need is though is we need uh, the alumni to embrace it. I think I think uh, one of the things since we started this Cougar Collective, I've met a lot of people that say, well, it's different. It's it's not like it used to be. We used to be told you can't do this, and and yeah, and I understand that, and I understand that a lot of people uh, it, it it it's uncomfortable for them. Um, but comfort doesn't matter. There's no white knight coming in to change the rules. This isn't an NCAA thing. This is a, a United States of America <laughs> Supreme Court thing. And, and so, uh, as alumni, we have to decide how bad we want to win. And uh, I want to win really, really bad. And so, if we want to win really, really bad, we need to close the gap when it comes to the NIL space at Washington State University. Uh, we need to support these guys on and off the field. And these guys are doing some great things with some of the deals that we've, give, we've given them. It's not just money for me to, uh, to, to flash around campus, flash around Pullman. It's money for me to... To, to help my family, to, to start a business, uh, to, to bring my parents to a game, those types of things and stuff. And I think it's very important because I was one of those kids. Uh, when I was in college, you know, my, I'm from Florida. My family, they didn't get to come see me play. We didn't have that kind of money for them to fly up and, and come watch me play. And, and, and so, uh, you know, I, I look at a, a guy like Cam Ward, who's, whose parents are at every game, and that's because a part of, of, of what he got through some NIL opportunities and stuff like that. So so it, it, it's an important thing. Coach Digger can talk about, you know, uh, uh, what it's like out there recruiting, uh, you know, with all those type of things. But but it, it, it's something that we as Washington State University alumni have to get off the couch. We have to decide how bad do we want it. These guys are putting the work in. They're doing their job. How bad do we want it? And uh, if you want it bad enough, we'll participate. We have a thing called the 1890 Club. And uh, for $18.90 a month, someone can, 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 uh, can join that 
If we had every season ticket holder for football join the 1890 club, we'd be able to support the entire football team uh, w through NIL. And that's all I need. It'd be 200 and what, 230 bucks a month, a, a year for, for every season ticket holder. And I think we can do that. I think we can, I, I think that's not out of the question. Well, I think the biggest thing is one of the core values of our program is trust, okay? And who would you trust in the NIL space than Robbie Tobeck, Jed Collins, Jack Thompson, right, to run this collective? And they've done an amazing job working with our players, okay? So there's names you can trust, there's people that you can trust, um, but at the end of the day, the landscape is changing. I echo what Robbie said, it's not going away. And we got to find a way to navigate in it. Um, because I think when everyone sees the Twitter and they see people leaving, there's frustration. Well, we can solve those problems. We can. Um, and we got to do it our way. You know, we've never asked for overlandish facilities. We never asked for whatever other teams have. We've always been in a space of doing it the way the Cougs need to do it. And I think that's the most important as we go forward is that it isn't a challenge, right? Every obstacle is another opportunity out there. Okay, and it's another opportunity to reward guys that have done amazing things for our university, our program. Okay, our football program has the highest cumulative GPA in Washington State football history. Okay, so absolutely. This is more than just what they're doing on the field. Okay, this is a product, this is a message. Uh, this is something that needs to go out there and make a statement for where we want to be. Okay, and the phrase I'm using all the time is, what do we want to do in the present to preserve the future of Washington State athletics and Washington State football? That's a question we all need to ask ourselves. What are we doing now? Because the landscape changes every day. And where do we want to be? Where do we want to go? And how do we create those opportunities? But I stand behind the young men in our program. I have their back. I trust these guys. I see them on and off the field. I see the person over the player. And I truly believe that these guys are worth getting behind and worth supporting. So uh, I get fired up about it. I'm excited about it. I don't even want to go into the recruiting stories, uh, but it's challenging, right? And to do things the right way and to have programs just come in and it's hard, right? But we need to do it our way. And I think that's the, the path that I think we've chosen to focus on, okay? It's not what other people are doing. It's what we want to do in this space to create the success that I echo, we all want to see, right? And that's the opportunity that we have in front of us. Jaden, let's go to you on this very same topic. You had a breakout season last year. You were named to a number of freshman All-American teams. And my presumption is some emissaries from other schools came and uh, offered you some opportunities via NIL to leave. But here, here you are wearing crimson and gray tonight. Tell us about that process and why you're still here. Yeah, I didn't even mind those colleges uh, asking me to come there. It's all because I trusted Coach Dicker. I trusted the Cougs. Uh, you guys give a, a young kid like me and Make a chance. And just the type of people you guys are, like, really kept me here. Um, the system, the defensive system is really going to allow me to succeed in what I want to do later on in life, not just right now. So that's why I really uh, chose to stay here at Washington State because it's like no other place in the United States. You know, the Cougs are a family. It's an appreciation for all you guys, like Rob. Uh, we're so appreciative of how you guys support us and what we do. So thank you. It, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Because I, I don't think, you know, even Robbie could think back to the pressures, A, through social media, B, through the NIL, that these 18 to 23-year-old young men, which they are, are under in today's landscape. You know, and I think that part of it is very important. But one thing we try to do too, and Robbie knows this, is create an environment in your program that when you're done, you're so thankful, you want to give back. Okay, and I think that has been, hopefully, in our program, Washington State football, for a long time. And, uh, you know, that is what it's gonna take. You know, but uh, you know, guys like Jaden and Make and, and some of the greats that I get an opportunity to visit with, uh, there's a lot of people out there that didn't get headlines on the field that are doing amazing things as professionals in other walks of life. And those are the ones, too, that we want to say, hey, give back to the great experience you had in our program. 
Monke, let's go to you. You're, you're an interesting uh, person to be up here for a couple reasons. You're a mechanical engineering major. He's the a, smartest one on the panel. With a math, with a math minor. <laughs> I, I, you, you were going to beat around that. He's the smartest guy up here. Yes. Mechanical engineering. Now think about this. Mechanical engineering ma major, math minor, and he's an honor student, and he, he's a hell of a football player. How do you balance all that? I mean, I mean, it's a, it's a hard workload. But one thing that I think I've really taken upon myself is to really take in the things that Coach Dicker has been teaching the team uh, through the whole program. Those things are trust, discipline, love, and competition. Those are our four main values of our team. And I think I've taken that and really committed myself to you know, being the best that I can for the team, for myself, all the time. And so, I mean... <laughs> Doing football is a lot, doing engineering is a lot, but um, I think that's another thing that I really love about Washington State and the why I'm here is that I'm able to pursue such a difficult uh, degree while playing football. And I don't know there's a lot of other schools out there who probably wouldn't have let me you know, do that. And so with that opportunity, it's just phenomenal to have that and be here with these guys. And um, you know, that's uh, something that truly embodies WSU and the Cougs helping Cougs. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Rob, we're going to go back to you, and we're going to backtrack a little bit. You and I had an interesting conversation yesterday about NIL. And it's a train barreling down on uh, college athletics. If you could deliver one or two sentences to the Cougars here and to the Cougars watching on streaming about NIL and the importance of it, what would that sentence or two be? Well, I don't know... As you recall last night, I, I couldn't boil anything down to one or two sentences. I went on and on and on. But, um, you know, I, I guess I would just say NIL is here. It's a part of college athletics now. And you have to decide, as a Cougar alum, when you wear your, when you wear your shirt, your hat, you know, whatever it might be, how proud do you want to be of that, of that university that you're cheering for? That, that, and I know a lot, a lot goes into a university. But the facts are, it's that, it's that football team on Saturdays that we all go back for. Uh, the facts are, it's that, that Cougar flag that's waving on college game day uh, that gets us a ton of, uh, of, of attention um, and, and notoriety. The facts are, it matters. It matters just as much as the, as, as the business school or, or, or the broadcasting or my son just graduated last week, construction management, all that. It matters just as much as all that because it's the face of our university. And so as the face of our university, we have to decide how hard we want to, how, how bad do we want to win? What we want our university, you know, I'm a representative of our university because I'm, I'm an alumni. And what do I want the, that university to reflect about me? I want it to reflect winning. And I want it to reflect winning big time, not winning every once in a while, winning big time. And uh, NIL is a great equalizer for that. But we have to have everyone participate to the level that they want to participate. Because U U USC, they've got more billionaires than anyone but Harvard. We don't have that many billionaires, but we have 200,000 alumni out there. If I had 10% of those, that were participating in NIL, the Cougar Collective, the 1890 Club, Coach Dickert would be able to sit down with anybody and compete with anybody when it comes to recruiting. Because the word would be out that you come to Washington State University, you're gonna have NIL opportunities. The word would be out. And, and uh, so we need everyone. We need everyone here. CougarCollective.org is where you can get more information about it. Uh, and uh, you know it's 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 needed and it's needed now it's not needed tomorrow it's not going to change it's needed now I'm not sure how much more time we have but coach I'm gonna ask you a question this is the final season of the traditional Pac-12 and therefore the final season of the traditional Rose Bowl opportunity are you taking advantage of the fact this is a, a unique time relative to the Rose Bowl no question I, I think uh, I really got this from coach Price uh, he used to talk about every year, you know, he'd give the guys a rose. You know, uh, one of our biggest things is like focus. Like, where do you want to focus your energy and attention? Because whatever has your focus, you're going to wake up every day with a passion to go chase it. You know, so we did that in January. We created a team competition that they've talked about, the race for the roses. Uh, 
and why not? Belief is power, okay? Belief is why, belief is purpose, and we believe we can go out there and do it. We believe we got the right men to do it. Now there's a process to that, and we talk about process more than anything in our culture and in our team, you know, but by no means am I ever gonna put a ceiling on a team and what we can accomplish. That's the goal, that's the dream, that's why we work every day, that's why when these guys come back May 22nd, they're gonna be busting their tail in 100 degree heat because it matters to them. And we're just really, really excited about where we can go. And uh, it's really a shame. The, the, the Pac-12 and the Rose Bowl has been an establishment. You know, and to see that go away, but this is the uh, last opportunity and it means so much to our people. I think it's really, really special. Thank you, coach. How are we doing on time, everybody? Keep going? We've we're got the plenty show. of time. We can do whatever we want, right? We've got we plenty, got plenty of, time. of time. Ah, he wants coach you oh, I got a little you. higher, yeah. I'm okay. not media trained, I got you. <laughs> <laughs> I just get fired up. Jake, I'm gonna stick with you for a second. Uh, new offensive coordinator, new defensive coordinator. There's a transition process to that. At the end of the day, what are we looking at for this Cougar team in 2023? What, well, what's think, the outlook? At the end of the day, change sometimes is inevitable and change can be really good. And I think we brought in the right people for our program. I think Coach Arbuckle, as Make alluded to, is one of the best young minds in all of college football. You know, so to bring his flair, and what we were looking for was continuity, not to start over. So similar things, similar language, but I love his creativity, I love his ingenuity, I love the tempo that is brought to our offense, and I love that the last two years at Western Kentucky, they were the number one team throwing the ball down the field. And I believe we're more athletic at wide receiver. And I think Cam's more comfortable. I think our offensive line has taken a huge step forward. Uh, so I'm excited about what they're going to have the ability to do on our offense this season. And uh, like I said, I think it's a unit that's still gelling together. Okay. You know, defensively, bringing in uh, Jeff Smetting, a Spokane native, you know, a guy that grew up in Coog Central and has been in our region for a long time. To bring him and his family back. Uh, to have consistency in what we want to do on defense, yet find ways that we can grow. Because I don't think it's ever good if you just stay the same forever. So to bring a new set of eyes, uh, Coach Miley has been in that process too as our new edges coach. And I think there's a great discipline and dedication to that side of the football and what we've built since 2020 and want to take another step forward. And I believe we can. You know, I don't know that the exact history, you know, but I believe we got four all-conference players on the defensive side. RJ, BJ, Jaden, and Shaw Smith Wade. You know, so I don't know how many times the, the Cougs have had four all-conference players and excited about what those guys are gonna be doing as the as the foundation of our defense. Jaden, I want to talk to you about the Cougar offense, in particular, because you go against the receivers every day. We've got a, a, a very new receivers room, and based on what we've read in spring ball, it sounds like some of these newcomers are, are go-getters. Talk about the Cougar receivers. What can we expect this year? Uh, they're definitely explosive, and they're fun to watch. And just competing with them every day, like, it's so amazing to me because we didn't really compete like that over the past couple years I've been here. And just seeing them as newcomers and transfers coming in, competing, buying into what we offer, and it's just amazing what they can do. Well, okay, talk about the depth of the offensive line. The offensive line was a work in progress last year. I know it's been a focus to uh, get that fixed this year. You and I talked earlier. You said some of the young guys are coming on. Just give us a quick rundown about the depth and why you're confident about the offensive line. Sure, yeah. Um, yeah, we've got a lot of young guys uh, getting some good development. I remember this spring was huge for some of the young guys and seeing them really develop uh, their technique and their trust in what we're being taught as an offensive line has really grown. Some of those guys, Zach Miller, I know he's been developing a lot. Uh, the Roten Twins, um, who else? Devin Kalaney, I know he's gonna be a big step up leader for offensive line, wherever it's at. I know he has the, some of the most energy on the football team and I'm excited to see what they can do for, uh, for our team in the coming years. Rob, back to you in the glory days of 92 with the snow, snow bowl and the uh, copper bowl and all that good stuff. You know, these guys are sitting here going, 92? Holy <laughs> cow, that was a long time. I wasn't even born. Were you, know, well, you guys like, born yet? Yeah, no, they weren't born. That's a man. 
Rob, you played on an offensive line that was uh, one through five was a hell of an offensive line protecting Drew Bledsoe, and you played for a hell of a coach in Mike Price. What are the biggest lessons you learned from that era in Washington State football? Well, you know, I guess playing with, with you know with Bledsoe behind you, you know, he holds the ball for a long time, <laughs> you know, and, and so so you got to block a long time. So that was one lesson I learned from him. Um, but you know, playing for Coach Price is, uh, you know, I owe that man more more than I can get into right now because he he truly took a chance on me, and um, I didn't want to let him down. And, and so, uh, you know, I think as I've gone through my life, I, I've 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 uh, it's kind of motivated me to 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 be my best to repay those that 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 took a chance on me, and and. Uh, um, I, I think that's that's the biggest thing for me is, is uh, being appreciative, and that's what, you know that's why I've tried to give back. You know because I appreciate the opportunity that Washington State University gave me, and uh, I, I, I just I've wanted to repay that over the years, and and uh, I'll continue to try to do so. Jake, you've talked in the past about servant leadership. Uh, the first time I ever heard the phrase was Tony Bennett, a fellow Wisconsinite. Talk about servant leadership. What, what's your definition of it, and how does it play itself out in, in how you operate this team? Well, I think one of the things that, that we've learned through servant leadership is that we've inverted the triangle. Right. So what that means is instead of the coaches at the top, then the seniors all the way down to the freshmen, right? And the, you know, the freshmen carry you know, the seniors' bags and this and that, we flip the triangle over, right? So the coaches are the base and the foundation, then the seniors, juniors, all the way up to the freshmen, and try to create a message that the seniors show the young guys the way, okay? The seniors are the guys that are gonna say, hey, I remember that day as a freshman. I remember that moment when I maybe almost wanted to quit. Stick it out, keep it going, okay? And every one of these guys could talk about a teammate or a time or a moment and they got their butt kicked and there's adversity right in the face and when you when you invert that triangle and you want to serve each other you just you take a giving mindset and when you do that you bring out the best in everyone that's around you you know so it's about finding that light in somebody planting that seed of belief and just encouraging them as you go up and down so just a recognition that it's our program you know it's not my program i've told them a million times it's our program you know so it's just taking ownership of that, and I believe when you're willing to give and you're willing to sacrifice and you're willing to reach outside the, the comfort zone of me, it's amazing what you can really find when you go out there. Coach, let's, let's stick with you here for a moment. Your coaching history was in Division Two, II, Division Three. You, you really took the long road to get here. You, you're not that old, but you, you, took, you took the long road to get here. I'm 40 this year. We're <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm guessing there's a certain appreciation for the place and time that you're in right now. Tell yeah. me how that long road that you took forged your approach to it all. I'm gonna, I'll take your question. The one question I get all the time is, Coach, you must coach these big time Power Five guys differently than those D3 guys. And my quick answer is always no. Okay, players crave accountability. They might not always love it, but they know they need it. They need discipline to become a man, right? And they need to be held accountable to what they're doing and show them the way, right? And believe in those kids. And, you know, maybe this is a little new school, but don't yell at them, teach them, right? Having the assumption that they're all out there trying to be their best and let's coach them that way, right? So when you look at it from that lens, I've done that coaching the D3 guys all the way up to what we do now, right? That doesn't mean they're not bigger, they're not faster, they're that stronger, right? But there's a way of doing it. And it was a blue collar approach. I'm very thankful for the places that I've been. I would never be able to do it without my wife, Candace. Uh, at one point we moved eight times in nine years while having three kids. Uh, you know, and, and this job creates a lot of sacrifice. And it creates a lot of sacrifice at home as well. So, um, you know, people ask a lot about balance. I uh, think one thing I always say is that balance is very hard, okay? But presence is necessary. 
right? So when I get an opportunity to be with our family, we're very present, you know? So it's been a journey. We've always been in small town, big college. And what we've learned is that fits us. Pullman fits us. Uh, five minutes to work fits me. I value that more than I can ever express. Uh, so it's just one of those things where it's the right place, the right time. Uh, just so proud and honored to represent Washington State and our football program. Thanks for being here. I think Cougar fans uh, would say the same thing. We're proud to have you on, on our side. We'll probably wrap up in a second. Let's go to Jaden and Make. Who are some young guys that Cougar fans maybe aren't familiar with that are going to have breakout seasons at Washington State this year? Jaden, we'll start with you. Uh, some young guys include Javen Robinson. He's a very young, talented corner that we have. Uh, he will be a star in the near future. Um, Reese Sylvester, he's a learning free safety right now, but he's on his road to success as well. And then our receiver, I would say Carlos. He's doing a, a well job, um, really catching on of what we're putting down. And yeah. Thank you. Okay. Uh, two guys that immediately come to my mind. You would think that I would talk about the offense, but specifically the, d the defensive line, because I always obviously go against them every day in practice. And even though I'm playing guard right now, I always pay attention to the two young guys at uh, DN who are right behind BJ and RJ. Lawrence Faltea and um, Ram Stevenson. Those two guys have developed greatly and I'm very impressed with uh, what they've done and I'm really excited to see what they can bring to our team later uh, in the coming years. Thank you very much. Rob, I'm going to ask you to give some advice to these young guys. You played college ball at a high level. You played professional football at an extremely high level. What's your advice for these guys going forward, both in the sport and in life? Well, you know, I, you know, life mimics football. That's uh, football is the great, the, the great teacher, in my opinion. I mean, I, you know, you want your kid to play football um, uh, because it's tough, it's hard, it's not easy, right? Um, but the one thing I, I think that I, I would say. If I could just say one thing is 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 remember that football just like you know you know the off season the season as you go through it just like life it's a marathon it's not a sprint you got to put the work in you got to put the time in you got it you got to be accountable to yourself and and you've got to be able to look in the mirror I think one of the things I think that separated uh, uh, a lot of great players with just some okay players is the ability to look in the mirror you know um, and look in the mirror and be honest with yourself on what you need to work on, what you need to do. I mean, the Hall of Famers I played with, I played with five or six guys that are in the NFL Hall of Fame, and none of them ever took a day off. None of them ever took a playoff. Jerry Rice, he was, I don't know, 40 years old. When I played with him, Seahawks, first guy out to practice every day. You know, John Randall, same way. Steve Hutchison, Walter Jones, Chris Dolman, these guys, were, uh, 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 worked their tails off and, and they were just different. Be different. You know, but just like I said, it's a marathon, it's not a sprint. You got to put the work in. Thank you. Thanks, Rob. Back to the players. Jaden, what does it mean to be a Coug? Uh, it means everything. It's like a family here and um, just the love you guys give, the love you guys show each and every week of game day. Like, it's so. It's so crazy as a young kid, like above, just in the stadium. You know, it's an amazing feeling, and all you guys cheering us on, it's amazing. Monke, well, okay, you're a local guy. You're from Everett. So I'm guessing you grew up watching Apple Cups. You, you know how much the Apple Cup means on both sides of that rivalry. Talk about what it's like to be a local product who's playing in the Apple Cup every year. I mean, it's. It's exciting. I, I love it. I love being over here on the west side of the state, seeing you know the, the other teams' logos, their school, and all their fans over here. But what really sticks out to me with the culture at Washington State is you see a Coug logo somewhere, anywhere you are in the world. You give a go Cougs, I'll give a go Cougs back. I love that culture so much. We're family, truly. And um, I think I alluded it to, her, uh, to it earlier. Cougs helping Cougs is the best, and I, I'll definitely stick to that as I continue my degree and afterwards after I'm done with college at Washington State I think I'll come back and help more Cougs as I can good answer <laughs> yeah I'm not gonna lose your number I know that uh, we'll wrap up with our head coach here Jake if you had 
one message for Cougar Nation, whatever it is, whether it regards NIL, whether it regards buying season tickets, whether it regards uh, belief in the young guys, whatever it is, what's your one message to Cougar Nation right now? Well, I just think the biggest thing is we're still building a program. And we built a foundation last year and just excited about where we're going. But just look around this room. There's Cougs everywhere, right? And I don't know if there's a university that I've ever been at that does an event like this. A Cougs first, a Cougs helping Cougs, a Cougs support Cougs first. Like, it's just something that's very unique and it's what separates us from everybody. So I know that was a football question, but to me it's a people question. There's great people, right? And uh, when you come across your path and you have great people, uh, there's just amazing things that we can do together. You know, and I think to, to Rob's message, that's what's needed more than ever. You know, I'm, I'm proud to represent our football program. I'm proud to take it to where we want to go. We're going to pour every ounce of everything that we have into it. And we're going to do it the right way. And there's going to be a football program that I guarantee you Cougs everywhere can be really, really proud of. And that's the message. Come support these guys. we got an amazing slate of games this year. We do. Uh, I can't wait to run out of that tunnel in that Wisconsin game. Okay, the stadium's going to be sold out. Every seat's going to be filled. The students are going to be going wild. And we can't wait to go out there and perform, right? Because when you put that Washington State logo on your chest, it's got to mean something to you. And I think we got a bunch of guys that really mean something to them, right? So rain, snow, sleet, or shine, when you're there, it matters, right? It really does matter. And when you stay for the whole game, it matters. It does, right? So I, I just think it's one of those things that we can't wait to get back out there. I'm really proud of our team. I'm proud of the work. And I think we're just excited uh, to go show it here Labor Day weekend. Coach, thank you so much. Jaden, Make, Rob, thank you all for being here. If we could get a round of applause. Thank, Thank you. you guys. Go Cougs. Go Cougs. Go Cougs.